Praise the Lord. Welcome to AIM. Guys, we're here on the mini farm, and you were asking about the soursop. There it is. It's not ready yet. And let's take a look and see if we can see some others and how they're coming along. There's this one. Here's a new one. A new flower coming out. So they take a little while to mature all the way. This one is big, but it's not ready yet. My husband was saying we could pluck it and put it on the counter and it will ripen there, but we don't want that. We want to ripen it on the tree as it's supposed to. And I'm sure there's others all around. Nowadays, I'm not really keeping my eye on each individual one. There's some new ones coming, so we are truly blessed. Um, yeah, so we've eaten two so far. We've eaten two. And um, the spraying, we have to keep spraying. So that's how it is. Guys, I would love, love, love to do everything organic and not use any chemical, nothing. But we haven't get there yet. I think for right now, we're going to go with the uh, recommending, recommended stuff. And then later, as we are able, we will go ahead and look into some organic, natural things. We don't want to put a lot of stuff in our bodies. We're very careful about washing it and all that stuff. And I realize there's still some that's going to get into the fruit or whatever. But um, we're trying our best, little by little, and we will get there eventually. Eventually, we will get there, the Lord willing. But moving from a Western diet to this type of diet, at least we know and we're limiting what we're putting in. Yeah. So that is the little chat on that. Here's the papaya. They're getting quite big. I'll show you the other ones and give you the update on that. The coconut trees are growing. Yep. We still have some garden eggs. My husband said when it starts raining, it will come back. So we'll keep our eyes on that. The cassava is still there. Once again, when it starts raining, see, the animals reach over here and <laughs> chew it off, but it comes right back. Um, once it starts raining, a lot of this stuff will flourish again. You see how the... Even the plantain is coming up very nicely here. And rainy season as well, we will be planting moringa. I already told Efu, and he will help me. We will plant the moringa sticks around the entire garden. Because some of these, this wood we've used, you see, it's not even attached now. So, um... That will be a permanent fix for the farm, for the fencing rather, the post. But a temporary fix is my husband has brought some wood from the farm. So we're gonna, I'm not, Ethel's gonna change these out for us. Nah. Yep. This nah. is where the papaya tree fell on it. So we lost the papaya tree over here because of our plumbing works. Yep. And then that cassava was broken. But I think it will still grow, guys. Even though it was broken. I think it will still grow. Poultry manure is just sitting there. Sister is here. <laughs> so the animals are doing well. We'll go in there on the other side. Um, yeah. We are blessed that this thing is working now my husband said he checked it he goes out the gate every day and takes the um this trash from the mini farm plot and takes it outside to fill in some of the gaps where uh, some of the gutter over there 
So we've been doing our part with the road work in the back there. <laughs> so this road will come. It just connects the road that's over here. And it just connects it to the main road there. So people will have access to their plots on this side. So let's say we didn't buy this plot. Let's say somebody else did. We have access over there. And then they would have access on this side. So if that was the case, they will come in and, you know, the road will be fixed right there. But for right now, nobody's using that. So that is how they have made provision here on this land, which is very good. We went to Adenta yesterday to drop the eggs. And guys, oh yeah, I found a place. Well, I didn't find a place. Um, my sister found a place where they sell popcorn. So, we are free. The only thing I haven't found yet is green tea, but I have black tea. You know, I can drink black tea is fine. Probably not the best thing for me to be drinking caffeine and tea anyway, but guys, I need a little help here on the mini farm. It's a lot of work, and I'm not in my 20s. Um, not in my 20s anymore, so it's a little bit, give me a little bit boost. It's probably mental a lot too, but anyway, that's a different discussion. So, the trees are doing well, considering over here. This one is coming back in better, and so is that. The palm trees, of course, the animals keep them down, which is good. The coconut tree, we just gave it up, guys. My husband finally said, just let them eat the bottom branches. So, yeah, that's how that is. And these flowers, guys, are really, really good. They just look at them. They're just growing. The animals don't eat these, I guess. Because otherwise, they would be totally gone so that's what's going on back here that's the update in the back pasture the grass is not coming in good um, many of you have made comments on how you know giving us ideas for how to get grass and they are so great and wonderful and I really really appreciate you for those comments and that shows you have the same heart as me. I would absolutely love it if the animals had green grass in there. Um, the funding is not quite there, guys. This takes a lot. It took a lot of capital to go ahead and cultivate the 26 acres of the farm. And all the animals you see here, guys, it's all, we all had to buy them all these animals and the dogs guys the dogs weren't cheap they sold us the dogs in dollars dollars guys dollars not cds dollars we paid a lot for them wisdom has wore himself out guys he has been trying his best to give us caucasian uh, shepherd mixed puppies because <laughs> pc girl is in heat right now but um yeah she's a tall girl she's a tall girl so he has been wearing himself out i fed him really good this morning some egg and his food and i had to sit there with him and coax him he's a lovesick boy he's a lovesick boy right now mm -hmm. he didn't want to eat he just wanted to get to his girl but I did that. And coconut, guys. They love coconut. The fruit itself. So I saved my coconut and I gave it to him. Another thing is, is he liked to grab it out of your hand and almost take your hand off. Well, I trained him so he doesn't do that. He's been a good boy. Right, wisdom? Good boy? Good boy? He's a tired boy. Oh, I didn't mean you had to get up, buddy. I didn't mean you had to get up. It's okay. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. I love his color. 
Excuse you. Excuse you, sir. You did eat good, didn't you? I got his water here, which I monitor during the day. Um, there he goes. Good boy. I'm still thinking on, like, how to get him a little place out here that he can, um, you know, splash his paws in. <laughs> anyway, that's a different discussion. I guess I'm just walking you guys around the mini farm today and giving you some updates. Ethel used some of the, the stuff from the plumbing work to go ahead and fill this area in for me. That's what I was talking about was the grass, guys. I would love, you know what I would really, really love? is to grow Bercuria grass. I hope I said that right. If you guys follow Sementia Farms, which I know a lot of you do, you will see the grass that he has. It's supposed to be high in protein. I would love to grow some of that grass, even be able to cut it and bale it and all that stuff like he does. Whew, but we're a ways away from that, unfortunately. But for now, um, we do have our lawnmower, riding mower, and it has attachments that will aerate. We have a rake attachment, which would be really nice to go around this and rake it. And then we also have the one that will plug the holes in the ground, but the ground is too hard right now for that. Once it starts rainy season, um, I... I wanted to see if my husband will be wanting to do that with the um, the lawnmower. And then the grass that's growing here will just grow. In the States, we didn't have weeds and all of that. But that takes chemicals, guys. And that's not what we want to do here unless we absolutely have to, like the fruit. Yep, and then on the 50-acre farm, um, the spring, yeah, we don't really want to do that, guys, but we haven't found the organic solution as of yet. We're still looking into that and researching it, but we haven't found it yet. So that is the update on that side, on that plot. And guys, I want to show you the coconut. You see that shoot? It's going to be coconut. Yep. So there's several on this tree that are coming out. See one there. You see one there. So they're really, really coming out. And I'm probably missing some. Yeah, I'm sure I'm missing some too. Probably some will come out of there. There might be some up higher that I'm not seeing. But that's what's going on there. This coconut is doing really, really well. And as you can see, where the water drains, it drains past there. So this one has gotten all the water it needs. The bananas are doing well. I tried to water this guava, which is growing good now, guys. But you see what we have the issue with. Yeah, so those little moth, white moth things, they actually eat the fruit. They eat the, the buds that are fruit. So, yeah. So we gotta keep those down, otherwise we won't have any fruit. That's why we didn't have mangoes. That's why the soursop kept falling off. Here is the banana, which I also, I can stand up there and shoot the water hose over here. And I do that sometimes to make sure the banana has water. So rainy season, another thing I would like to do is transplant some of this banana somewhere else, maybe two or three places, because I would love to have a lot of banana. So Gracie likes laying under there, so we moved her from her run to underneath here. Um, Peace and Subine are in their favorite spot. Wisdom's back there. Yep. 
Yeah. So let's go check out the puppies. And guys, haven't seen any lemon yet. But maybe we should check out the mango first. Because my sister said she thought she saw some mango on there. And she was right. She was right. Let me zoom in for you guys. I didn't see it. She saw it. You see that? Wow. Wow. What a blessing. What a blessing. So my husband is on top of it. And this one is, I forget, one is a local type and one is a foreign type of mango. So these, this tree here, and this is two trees. So you can see how it looks a little different. You see how that tree on the other side is more short. This one is longer and taller. So yeah. You see the difference in the leaves here and here. So this is two different types. Mm-hmm. So we'll be having mangoes, the Lord willing. The moringa is here. And I want to show you guys about the moringa too. So this actually turned out really well. The water for the AC is draining there. The dogs did not remove the the pipe as I thought they would so that's good guys because it's hot what I do normally is we keep this on until you know maybe mid morning ish to early afternoon and then I have I'm able to go in there and cool off a little bit if I need to Yep, because this month is very, very hot. So, we're just taking precautions. And the garden on this side. See, I have to, um, maybe I get Nana to help me because he's pretty strong. Come and level this out. So, this is part of, you know, the finishing works that we want to do to make things level here. So I will get Nana to help me if Evo can't do it. He's got other projects. Nana and I can level this out because as soon as it starts raining, you're gonna get the dip right here. So when you're walking, you're gonna, if you step wrong, you will twist your ankle or something. So we will fill that in. This won't be a problem. But now we are going to have to make sure we start our rows over here. So this space right here, which is good. We'll keep it away from the, keep everything away from the wall. And you'll have a nice clean space to walk through. And then the rows will be this way. I'd like to get it a little more organized. It's just kind of a little bit messy right now little straighter rows and it started out that way but it just didn't end up that way so the ones we think are not going to produce anymore we'll pluck those out and then the rest of them we'll see how they go so those are some of the things we'll be doing Efu said the way that this papaya is changing color here that by next week it will be ready. Wow. So this is a different type. It's I think it's a local type. So very, very nice, very good. The moringa, guys. I just broke this off and gave it to them because we weren't planning on keeping this moringa here long term. But I don't know, guys. We might, might, or we pull it up by the roots. But look at it growing back. It's like the cassava. I didn't know that. This one was totally cut off with nothing on it. And look at how it's growing nice. So maybe we might 
try our little starter garden around here again. Might try that again. That would be really nice because all the black soil and everything is still in here. So it would be nice or a herb garden. It could be my herb garden. Yep. It's, it's small, but it's enough. It's enough. And that's what's going on here. The coconut over here is growing. So these are the same coconuts and the little one over there that we have planted on the farm. Yep, we just planted them a little bit behind the other ones. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see how it goes. So we'll take a walk around front. Guys, two, we are sending two puppies who have been bought, a male and a female. We're sending them to Kumasi, VIP, <laughs> VIP. So they will be traveling, two puppies, and then it's hot, guys. That's why you see them a little bit calm, because it's hot. So they will be traveling, and I think we have three other puppies going. So that's what we got going on with that. So we're getting down there. That will be... um Three puppies left, two males and a female left. Here's the cassava giant. My husband has hit the jackpot, guys. He found a place where we can get a lot of cassava. Yep, it's a, it's a bit of work to bring it here, dry it, you know, set it out, take it back in, set it out, take it back in all the way till it dries, but the animals need to eat, and we sure can't afford to buy bags of food for all the animals. And I don't even know if they would eat that. They're not used to that. They're used to this kind of stuff. So, yeah. Just like our big dogs, they keep on telling us to give them the local food. Well, I tried giving them some things, and they just won't eat it. So they're used to the, the dog food. So that's what we give them. Now the puppies, the one that came here and remembered me, that puppy eats local food, guys, and it is fine with it. So once you have a puppy, you can decide. But when they get older, it's hard to change their food. So this is what... Things are looking like here. This stuff will take off again. Here is the hibiscus. I don't know. I'm not too impressed. My, my goal for those hibiscus was to get a couple of trees where I can get my own flowers. You can use these flowers, but they don't have the um, amount of petals on there as these do. So you're not going to get as much. Anyway, that was my goal with the hibiscus. It just didn't work out. And here is Nana's garden. Guys, doing great. Doing great. So the sugar cane is looking nice. The contumery is still there. You know, dry season, even on the farm, it's a little bit hard to find the contumery now. My husband gets some, but it's not like it was. I have a lot of peppers to come in here and pick. Wow. And then the garden eggs. Wow. This garden eggs is looking fabulous. It's even flowering. Right? It is garden eggs, yes. Because the sometimes I get them confused with turkey berry, but the turkey berries have um, thorns. So this garden egg is doing amazing. And there's some back in there too. If you guys don't know, look it up, garden egg. It's like a mini egg plant. But they have different colors. Some are purple, some are white. Just depends. 
We were blessed to have somebody come and wash all of our cars, including the truck. And he does a really good job. Took him all day, guys. Took him all day, inside and out. And it was hot. So we're blessed. He, uh, his work, he couldn't do his work. So he called up. We used to take the cars to him all the time because he, he does a really good job at cleaning them. But he got a different, um, he got another job. And he rides on the Trocho. He's a mate, Trocho mate. So they're the ones that help the Trocho driver. They try to get people, um, customers and stuff as they're going by. And I think the Trocho broke down or something. So he was able to come. So we were blessed. And in here, we bought feed yesterday. So here is the feed. We bought 15 bags this time. Yep. So we're going to see how things are going. Um, I was able to go. This is why I like going sometimes to places. Because I was able to talk with the guy. And get some tips. My husband came and got me from the truck. And he said, you know, he's talking about the chickens and stuff. So... Um, he actually helps people set up farms and things. So I was able to talk to him about some of the things I'm thinking about with the chicks. And he was able to um, give me information like the lights and the timing, guys. This is one power tip that he gave me that I'll share with you guys. The timing of your care of the chickens is super important they are birds of habit and routine and they really like routine so good morning sister again so they really like a routine so once you get a routine down and they like the same person coming there what sister i don't have any food missy you got food down there and in the ark. So I was able to glean that from them. It's very, very important, the timing. Yep. So that's good. Look at Mama scratching on that piece of wire. Don't poke your eye, Mama. Don't poke your eye, okay? Has some Mamas. Uh oh. Has a Mama. Let's see what those boys are doing. Baby girl, you doing all right? So that was the power tip I got yesterday. So I hope you guys who are wanting to do poultry have um, taken my advice and always watch my vlogs with pen and paper or someplace you can take notes. Because when you're getting into doing it, I'm just telling you it's a lot, you will forget things. So have your notes together. Have your notes together. Power tip for the day on poultry farming, timing, and famili familiarity. Is that how you say that word? I think so. You have to keep a consistent routine with them if i'm the one always going in there and somebody else goes in there they won't be happy baby girl is chewing on the bag i think we should find a new place for the bags because i've been picking these bags up all the time now i think i'm gonna leave them till later just pick it up once and for all they want the bags out then i guess they get them out um, so I learned a lot from that. The chickens, they're used to me and I'm only picking the eggs once a day now, guys. And that's okay. Cause they're not being broken. So yeah. So that is a blessing. 
I'm not telling you to do that with yours. What I am telling you is keep records and watch. Watch how things are going. Pay attention to your birds. But however you want the routine to be, start with that from the beginning right you do have to do some research and i've done that with these birds i've tried i was picking every hour picking the eggs every hour guys that can wear you out then i went to every two hours then i went to three times a day then i cut it back to two times a day i was monitoring them hey missy i was monitoring them and seeing when the best time was to pick the eggs when they had the most eggs so that they weren't they wouldn't get broken but what i'm realizing even when i there is one box that i always get a broken egg and i can tell it was a broken egg because there's some yolk on the other eggs so um I think maybe whatever chicken is laying in there is laying one of those really soft shell eggs that can't hold up once she lays it. Um, I didn't see Mr. Oh, there he is, eating. But aside from that, I don't get broken eggs. I don't get broken eggs unless I do something and break one. Excuse you. Excuse you. There's the guinea fowl. And there's the salt lake, guys. A brand new salt lake. Yep, their salt lake was finished. Brand new salt lake. Guinea fowl got something to say, too, guys. I don't know what they're saying, but they have something to say. Anyway. Out of all my research, and I kept records, guys. I didn't just do it, uh, you know, and look at it. I kept records. How many eggs I got at 8 o'clock? How many at 9? How many at 10? How many at 11? But at the end of the day, through all the researching and all the record keeping that I found, um, Somebody else was picking the eggs for us, and we were getting a lot of broken eggs. So we were thinking that we had to pick the eggs more often. But as soon as I went back to doing everything myself, I realized that the person who was picking the eggs was probably breaking them somehow. So, it was our granddaughter, and she's just 15. So, she's kind of scared that they're going to peck her, even though they're de-beaked. <laughs> so, if they peck you, it won't hurt. But, um, yeah, I think that's where they were getting broken. So, you do your own observations. I'm just giving you an example of the observations we did. And she was helping. She was helping us a lot. But she just, she didn't grow up around chickens and stuff. And it can be a little bit, um, you can be a little bit nervous if you think they're going to peck you. You're taking their eggs. So, yeah. The ones out here, go ahead and try and touch the eggs or the chicks. So this mama's, you are going to get pecked. So, it does takes a little bit of overcoming that. I don't know what's up with Missy lately. She almost acts like she doesn't feel good. But I'm keeping an eye on her. I've been hand feeding her a little bit. I'll probably give her some moringa. Anyway, so keep your records. And keep the records that are important to you. I've showed you guys my records. It's, it's not... Uh, professional it's just my personal records that I want to track and keep and even the guy yesterday was telling me that that is something that a lot of people that he has encountered don't do they don't keep their records they don't 
um, assess how things are going on their farm. They just do it however. And if they make money, they make money. If they don't, they don't. They don't know. So for me, I want to make sure this is lucrative. I want to make sure that we are able to um, make a profit before we scale. I don't want us to scale and do this. This can be quite labor intensive. So I don't want us to scale it up if we're not making money on it, guys. If we're just breaking even, it, it doesn't make sense. I love the chickers. Don't get me wrong. I love having chickers. I love fresh eggs. But if you're doing it for personal, that's fine. Um, one of our clients turned family she really wants to do it just for personal if i was doing it for personal i would do all the apple cider vinegar stuff and all that natural things that they talk about i would do all those things but we are um we are doing it professionally like for a business so i want to make sure that we're going to make a profit i want to make sure we'll be able to hire somebody and give somebody a job to be able to handle the new batch of chicks that we get. So those are the things that are important to me. Therefore, I keep records on how many of each size egg we get. And then I calculate it all to see how much money we have made that day. And I already know in my head how much the feed costs for the day. So I want to make sure that we're making a profit. So these are some of the things you guys want to check into. What's important to you? Track it. Track it. Don't track it for one week. I've been tracking for months now. I've been tracking since they came, actually. And, you know, I continue to track. Yeah. So that's my little tip there. Mama and the five chickers are doing well. I don't know if we can take a little peek i don't like disturbing mamas but she gotta let us see her chickers oh yep i see five good so they will be staying in there for a while guys a while till they really grow um we don't really like to cage them like that but you who have followed us here on the mini farm know that we have not been keeping our baby chicks that the hawks have been getting them. We have hawk nests. I'll show you guys that. Um, you probably won't see the actual nest, but I'll show you where they are. You know, having a forest nearby is very, very nice, but it also has its downfalls. So there are hawks nests up there. Yep. And I think there's one over here too. So the hawks are around. Um, I love watching them fly. I don't love when they eat our chicks, though. <laughs> but anyway. Next on the agenda, Missy. Missy Miss is getting around now. Yes, she is. Why does she insist on sitting in the food bowl missy oh and now she has spilled it i had it down on the ground and she was sitting inside of it missy oh when i hit my head missy you are becoming difficult hmm you are becoming difficult now the animals love it when you're spilling this food Okay, let's try to... What, Missy? Are you okay? I don't know what's... She doesn't feel good. I don't know what's going on with her. Good thing I'm getting it on the video. Is she having a hard time breathing? Wow. Okay, I have to go get my husband to come and look at her. I don't know if she's going to make it. She wasn't feeling well, guys. That's why I put her in here um, two days ago. 
I mean, she seemed like she was doing okay, but now she's not doing so good. So I'll have to get with my husband and probably gonna have to cut this video pretty soon because she looks like she's really struggling. I don't know what he'll do, but he can't really do much, I guess, because we don't know what's going on with her. She has water, she has food. These ladies, I have to clean this cage, but they have two eggs for me now. One small, tiny egg. So they need to uh, stay in there. They're not really producing well. Missy, I can't put Missy back. Her, her feathers are growing back now, but I can't put her back in there. And then this brown one, they're pecking her a lot too. And the black one is the same thing. So really, I can't put any of them back in because that's it. They just peck them and worry them. So the baby goats, see, they're doing good. The black one, brown, dark brown one, has really grown past the tan one. The tan one was growing very fast in the beginning. Um, she looked like she was going to be the stronger of the two. And I've had that happen before. And then the brown one really caught up. And the other one is slacked off now. Anyway, that is the update there. These chickers are doing well. Some of them are old, guys. Some of them have been here since shortly after we came. So they're about, um, I would say they're almost two years, some of them. Some of them came with the batch of birds we have over there. Mean Mama, what's up? Bully Rooster, sister wants to come in here and come lick over there on the, on the side here and try to get her some chicken poop. Guys, I actually, let me know in the comments if you ever heard of this. I actually came across a video of a poultry farmer. Uh, well, he was a farmer. He had all kinds of birds and all kinds of animals. Yeah, well, maybe not all kinds of birds, but all kinds of animals. And he said that he feeds his pigs and goats poultry manure, the litter, when he changes the litter he feeds it to them let me know if you've heard of that because our goats love they absolutely love eating it and the sheep a little bit but not so much but he was saying that he really saves money on his um pig feed because of it so i don't know guys let me know in the comments if you've heard of that because a lot of you had grown up with um, raising animals and stuff. So this is the ladies here. Yep, eventually we'll have to sort out the ones that aren't laying. Yep. And then these ladies are doing really good. So, um, the beginning of the month, I'm going to disinfect the pen. Yep, I'm going to disinfect the pen with an, I don't know what it really is, guys, but it is what's recommended to keep infection down, to keep, um, whatever else, diseases and stuff like that down so that they don't get sick. Yep. So there they are. Doing well. Like I said uh, yesterday, when we went to deliver the eggs, we went to deliver the eggs. This is all we got left, guys. I have, I do have a few crates of the large up at the house. All right, guys, I dropped you. <laughs> well, not all the way, I caught you, but 
the camera went off. So, um, I've learned to take some large eggs because that's what we sell the most. And I take them and keep them in the house so that every time somebody rings the bell, they don't have to wait for me to come all the way down here and get the eggs and bring them all the way back up and then get them their change. So even when Nana answers the bell, he has his, his um, way that he answers. So I'm teaching him good customer service. Yes. Oh, I wanted to show you guys not only the eggs, that we took the eggs, but here is my little, um, this is what I use. And you will want to track different things. And then I keep notes at the bottom. Now, I will redo this. Matter of fact, let me take it with me because I wanted to make a new um, sheet. And I will redo it. So I keep on keeping my records and then according to the things that are useful to me i still track those things things that are not useful to me i do not track it anymore so that's what i have noticed in the beginning it was quite useful for me to track how many eggs i picked at what time that information allowed me to know when the best time for me to pick the eggs was, right? And then from there, I actually realized that I can pick the eggs, maybe because it's not so many. I think that's the reason. There aren't very many birds. Now, I call them the 300 chickens still because that was their name. But now, really, we have about 260 in that big pen. We've separated some out here. We lost some and some we've separated to the black chicken's pen. So yeah, so that's what we have. So because of the fact that we don't have a huge amount, I'm able, and the way our boxes are and everything, I guess, I am able to pick the eggs once a day in the evening so far now i've been doing that for about three days now and it's worked out fine the thing that got me thinking about doing that is number one i'm trying to limit my amount of time out in the heat and the sun that's number one number two I am trying to also make sure that the chickens are happy, that the eggs are not breaking and everything like that. So when we went to church or we had to go somewhere during the day and came back and I picked the eggs at night, everything is fine. Everything is fine. So. I decided why not keep it like that and with the information I found out yesterday about them liking a routine that actually will work out good because every day I will pick the eggs at the same time and the poppers I had them a little shade here but I think it blew over pop pop it's hot now guys so yeah I gotta keep them shaded because it's hot we'll play with them later nana and i will get them and play with them later Papa, ba -ba. okay so i think that is a full update guys um we have somebody coming to look at land today near us i showed you guys the land the video is not that far back um, the plots are going quick, guys. But like I said, there were two more plots that um, I didn't know about. Yeah, there were. I didn't realize it. And I haven't, hadn't showed you guys those. So check out that last video. Just look, scroll down and look at the videos and you'll see the land for sale video. So again, guys, I'll show you one more time. 
I always show you, but I'll show you again. Let's come back here. No, big boy's not up here. So we're back at the mini farm, guys. I'll give you a quick overview. Guys, the area, Amasaman is very close to here, okay? So we're just past Amasaman. We're still on the outskirts of Accra. We're in the suburbs of Accra, okay? But it's still country. It still has a country feel. You see the mountains? Oh, sorry, guys. I tipped you down. See the mountains over there? You see the brown roof back there? That's what I always tell you guys. The brown roof. Okay. Uh, let me focus you in. There's the brown roof. You see the house with the brown roof, right? You guys see that? You guys see that right around there? Yep. So that, if you look to this side of it, that is where the land is. There's two plots beside this blue wall right here and one plot directly behind the yellow house. There's also the two bedroom apartment still available at the yellow house, guys. Still available and the stores and storage down below still available. So if you're shipping your items and you need a place to put them and you need a place to stay until you get yourself situated, you could have your things right in the store right below the apartment. Yep, if you'd like to start a small store or something too, there it is. It's available for you. The land is there. Guys, please, I know if you're serious, you're going to go there. You're going to go to the website, aaimcs.com, scroll down to the on the Contact Us page to the map, and guys, see where we're at. So the land's available. There's still the unfinished house over here. Still available, guys. So you actually go down this road behind our backyard, make a left, and then it's right up there. So that's where the house is located. On, it's about two thirds of a plot, I would say, roughly. So it's almost a whole plot. And it's a nice, simple house. A nice house. Um, yeah, those are the things available. If you guys are interested, contact us. A-A-I-M-C-S dot com. Uh, the website's always in the description box. Go to the contact us page and contact my husband, Maxwell Mensa on WhatsApp. You will get current pricing and availability, guys. Like I always say, the road is the road construction is going on fast i think i will try to do updates for you guys when i go sundays when we go to church i will try and do the road update for a little while every week until you know they finish it so you guys can see how it is moving along they are moving fast guys they're moving fast and they're doing a great job but I said that to say this, once that road is completed, the price of the land is going up. As a matter of fact, I think within a month now, my husband is trying to hold the guy off from raising the price, but within a month, the price will go up. So contact my husband to see the pricing now and see what you can work out. Within a month, the price will go up for sure. So, and then after that, when the road is complete too, it will go up again, guys. The prices are going up. And it's not unrealistic. It is definitely worth it because of the proximity you are to everything you want. But you still have that country feel, as we call it in the States. Um, you still have civilization around, like somebody said, you know, back to civilization, but we are in civilization. 
we just have our little oasis that feels like we are in the deep country. So, yeah. But there's everything around. There is opportunity for you to carve yourself a place right here. And, yeah, with like-minded people. Um, yeah. So I'll leave it at that, guys. If you're interested, contact us. And, yeah, let me know. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your comments. I'll be sure to look at them. And I do try to answer all. So I hope I haven't missed any. Uh, that is my goal. To always answer every single comment. And read them. Read them. Because you guys give good information a lot of times. Okay. So and let me know guys in the comments. Have you ever heard of feeding the poultry manure. The poultry litter to pigs or goats have you heard of that let me know all right guys at that i'm gonna let you go till next time god bless you